This is Valley News Live at 10. Good evening. I am Nashe Taylor. Thank you for joining us on Valley News Live at 10. Tonight, we begin with an exclusive story. There's a, a big, big piece of me missing. And I'll, I'll never get that piece back. This week marks the one year anniversary of when Moorhead police went from investigating the disappearance of 19 year old Destiny Avery to tracking down her killer and later locating her dismembered body in the Clay County landfill. 27 year old Ethan Broad is charged with second degree murder, while 34 year old Brandon Erbstauser 27 year old Andrea Payne and 23 year old David Erno are accused of helping Broad cover up the murder for weeks. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley traveled to Colorado this weekend where Destiny's family honored and celebrated her life. It's a story you'll only see here on Valley News Live. I never imagined having to come visit one of my kids at the cemetery. Conversations that used to happen multiple times a day between a mother and her young daughter are now one-sided. Destiny, I miss you. I miss you, baby girl. And while one year, especially this one, seems like a long time. I thought it would get easier. It's never going to get easier, baby. Doreen's broken heart still has a lot of grieving left, saying she can't truly start healing until the four people accused in Destiny's murder and cover up have finally taken responsibility and are serving prison time. But I think once this is over and done with, I can actually start mourning my daughter because right now I can't because all I'm concentrating on is what they're doing and what games are they going to play next. I just don't think that it's fair that they're going to get out and be able to live their lives and Destiny doesn't have her life anymore. For now, Destiny's family is finding joy and healing through the little things. <laughs> Filling balloons of her two favorite colors. Two, two three. three. We Bye, love Brad. you, Destiny. Sent to her in heaven from those who loved her most. Remembering the daring and spunky 19-year-old for who she was, not what happened to her. She would always make sure you had a smile on your face. She was a giver. And finding solace in the many signs and signals of love Destiny's family says she sends to them every day. Destiny's here with us. She's always, always with here. me. Always. Bye, baby girl. I love you. In Colorado, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Brandon Herb Stouster is expected to plead in court tomorrow afternoon. Meanwhile, Ethan Broad has a hearing on Tuesday. If Broad's most recent mental evaluation finds him competent and if the Clay County judge denies his attempt to take back his plea, Broad will be sentenced. Meanwhile, members of the National Guard were shot at early this morning in Minneapolis. According to a Minnesota National Guard spokesperson, no one was seriously hurt. Guard members, along with a number of police, were providing neighborhood security when someone took shots at them from a light colored SUV. Two guard members had minor injuries. One was taken to the hospital after being cut by shattered glass. The U.S. has seen a rash of mass shootings over recent weeks, and some officials see it as a second pandemic affecting the country. Here's the latest report. Three people are dead and two others severely wounded after shots are fired early Sunday morning at the Summers House Tavern near Kenosha, Wisconsin. Sounds like uh, one person got removed from the establishment uh, and, and possibly came back a short time later. CNN and the Gun Violence Archive consider an incident with more than four people shot, excluding the shooter, a mass shooting, and at least 50 have occurred in the U.S. since March 16th, when eight people were killed at three spas in the metro Atlanta area. I mean, in this last month, it's just been horrifying what's happened. How can you say that's not a public health issue? On Sunday afternoon, Texas police responded to a shooting incident that authorities say claimed at least three lives. As some analysts say, the gun issue defines part of the way the world views the U.S. Our allies 
are perplexed um, and worried about the fact that we can't seem to have a national conversation about the epidemic of gun violence in our country. Some psychiatrists say these frequent shootings are causing Americans to become more desensitized toward gun violence. The body naturally responds from the horror and the shock to try to protect ourselves by increasingly becoming numb. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Last month, the Democratic-led House approved a pair of gun reform bills that called for expanding background checks, but both pieces of legislation have stalled in the Senate. Emergency crews responded to a single car crash on I-29 around 3 p.m. today after a vehicle collided into the median. The 45-year-old driver suffered from a medical emergency and became unresponsive. Rescue crews attempted CPR. The driver was transported to a local hospital where he was later pronounced deceased. And tonight we're learning a seven year old girl has also died after a hit and run crash in Roulette County. Shortly before 5 p.m. yesterday evening, an, an Oldsmobile Alero heading northbound on Highway 281 encountered a group of children crossing the roadway. The driver struck the girl, ran into a ditch and then fled the scene. The child was airlifted to a hospital in Minot where she later died from her injuries. And a Grand Forks man is hurt after falling asleep behind the wheel of a semi truck this morning in Stutzman County. Troopers say 27 year old Dakota Hatch was driving southbound on Highway 52 when he fell asleep, causing the truck to roll. Hatch was taken to a local hospital. If she had a chance to go back, I know she'd do it again. She'd save them. Nearly one year after Clearwater 18 year old died saving others, her family is a step closer to healing. Raina Nealon is being honored for her bravery. Valley News Team's Courtney Lockie has the story. Those who knew Raina Nealon say she always put others first. It impacted so many people because she was there. It was that kind of selflessness that led to a tragic accident on Clearwater River last summer. 18 year old Raina drowned after jumping in and saving her three younger cousins. It's just Raina, as soon as I heard this, that, that she was drowned or whatever the accident, I knew that she had saved those kids. I knew it had something to do with the kids. To her family, she's always been a hero. Now she'll be honored as one to people all over the nation. She's one of two people in the country receiving the Single Act of Heroism Award. And she's the first Minnesotan ever to be given this prestigious honor. I think this may be a healing process for all these children. They are all still grieving and still struggling with this. Raina's family will accept the award this fall in Boston. They're hoping to raise enough money to make the trip, saying it's the closure they still need. Courtney Lockie, Valley News Live. Now, if you'd like to help the family get to Boston this fall, we have links to a GoFundMe on our website. Download the VNL News app. You can find this story on our homepage. Later on Valley News Live at 10. A new network geared towards country music fans will soon hit your TV screens. Stick with us. Summer is up next with a first look at your forecast. Stay with us on Valley News Live at 10.